Okay, today's project. Uh, making a collapsible bush saw. Now, I'm not gonna... I basically started out with a piece of 1x6 maple. Um, I think I paid nine bucks for it at uh, Home Depot. Decent piece of wood. I chose maple for, I don't know, whatever reason. I like it. Um, the whole idea is I'm going to have a uh, uh, collapsible bush saw. And I know you've seen them on on the web, and there's a bunch of different companies that make them. I'm not going to bring up any particular name. Uh, I think it's a cool idea to be able to have a saw that you can take apart. And um, sorry about the glasses. Sun's out. Just had a snowstorm. Just had a snowstorm, and the sun is out today. It's about nine degrees. Typical New Hampshire, January, February day, whatever the hell month we're in. Uh, anyway, um, as I guess before I get off on another tangent, where uh, it's I, I like to have a saw out in the woods because I think it's a uh, it's a lot safer sometimes. Cutting up firewood, um, easier to use. Sometimes swinging an axe. As much as I love to use my axe, it can get you in trouble when you use it when use it for things you shouldn't be using it for. So my answer to that is to uh, have you know my little Laplander folding saw, of course. But if I want to cut like a four or five inch, you know, piece of eastern white pine or something for the fire, um, you know, that's a lot of work to cut with that little saw. I want to use that little saw for what it's intended for. So. Anyway, as I said, here's the start of the project. Uh, as you can see, it's just I ripped that down to an inch and inch and a half wide. It's three quarters of an inch thick. And I'm not going to show you. <clears throat> I don't want to get into saw safety and tool safety and all that stuff. I don't want you know. If you know how to use table saws, I mean, I've got a table saw here and a chop saw. I mean, if you know how to use tools and not hurt yourself, that's fine. But um, I'll just kind of show you the hand, you know, when I'm chiseling and stuff like that, just to keep it, you know, I don't know, keep it simple. Anyway, as I said, I, uh, I, r I ripped this down, so I'm going to cut the two end, um, the two, the handle and the front piece now, and then I'll cut the beam later, but uh, first of all, I'll do this, and then I'll get back to you. All right, let's get in out of that cold weather for a minute. Um, this is the rough saw or the rough, uh, what it's going to look like. This is 24 inches long. Um, I went with a 24 inch saw versus a 21 inch saw because I like, uh, I think it, the longer the better, if you will. Um, and I'm actually in the process of having a, uh, a new bush pack made up by uh, Sarge Feria, uh, the Woodsman School, which I'm sure you're more than familiar with. And uh, it's a bomber pack, but the pack specs are 24 inches high, so I can get up to a 24 inch item on the side of the pack. And ultimately I want to have my saw on one side and my axe on the other side, or both on the same side. But the bottom line is I can slide my saw all folded up down the side of that pack. So, and as I said, I, I went with a 24 inch just because I think it's that much better. Um, but essentially it's going to look like this. Excuse the mess, I uh, was doing some other projects. Um, you can see I made a leather possibles pouch, if you will. The other, um, I, don't, I tried to do a video on it, but I got interrupted. And Anyway, that's what it came out like. My first one, I'm kind of, kind of proud of it, actually. But um, anyway, this is the main beam here. Essentially, it's going to sit like that, and this will be a mortise and tenon joint, is what they call it. I have no idea who's mortise and who's tenon, but anyway, that's what they call it. I'm not a wood, I'm not a woodworker, as you can, you may well have guessed. It'll look like that, and that'll pop out, and these will fold down like this, essentially. And as you can see, the blade is sticking out, but I, what I'm going to have is a little slice. I'm going to rip this here so there'll be a little trough. And it's going to fold up just like that. So that's how it's going to carry. With my cord, my cord, because on the top, I'm sure you've seen these bush saws, but I can't imagine you haven't. I'm going to have a piece of cord, uh, some sort of cord, cord 
going across here to tent to pull these two together to main tension with a wooden paddle that'll stop right there. Um, so essentially it'll carry like this. Like that. So that's what it's going to look like. And um, for this, I decided, I thought about it a lot. And the best thing I could come up with was, a, well, first of all, I wanted it to be easily field repairable. So if you break the blade, which you're going to at some point, you can um, change the blade or fix it with as minimal amount of tools as possible. And I think that's really key for anything you're going to use remotely in the push or camping or whatever. So what I did was I got some clevis pins um, that I'm going to end up cutting down. But this is going to go, there's going to be a hole. Obviously I got a slice here to slide the blade up in. So let's pretend this is inside the saw now. This will go down through there and hold it. Out the back I will have my washer. And I decided to go with a cotter pin versus a clevis pin. The reason being from working around mechanical stuff my whole life I realized that clever spins fall out on a regular basis and with a saw you bump it you do whatever you're gonna lose the clever spin one way or the other so I thought a cotter pin backed up with a washer would be um, a good way to go and you'll be able to pull it out put it in with you know a multi-tool worst case and case scenario I suppose you could work it out of there with your knife if you had to but if you carry a multi-tool you know, you're going to be able to get this cotter pin out, pull the pin out, and essentially put in a new blade if you can acquire one, and make it, you know, make a field repair. So, anyway. Uh Okay, here on the end, I want this to be a tight fit. So I can't use my table saw because this is such a thin blade. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take a hacksaw and cut this part. So when this blade slides in, it'll make more sense when it's all together. When the blade slides in, that'll be a tighter fit and the blade won't be doing this shit. Um, so to achieve that, I'm very carefully taking my hacksaw like this. This is going to take a while, so and, uh, as you can see, I've got my island. I love my wife. Did I mention that? I love you, sweetheart. Uh, <laughs> converted the island into a woodworking bench. It looks like we got a bullseye first shot. You can see that. That. All said and done, the old clevis pin looks just like that. And uh, that side's done. Alright, I decided that I wanted to go up six inches high. No. Sorry, seven inches high. Reason being that'll mean I can cut through a seven inch log, which is pretty ambitious, but you never know. And I think it's important that the distance between the bottom of the beam, and I don't know if that's called a beam, but that's what I'm calling it, between the bottom of the beam and the beam and the saw, and the top of the saw, I think you want it the greater distance towards the blade. Um, so I'm gonna measure up seven inches on both then what I have to do is determine, um, get this, you know, figure out where I want this, and then I'm going to have to measure from here to here, make sure these are perfectly straight. I'm going to add about a degree of angle for the tension, so when it tightens up, it'll look straight. Well, I made the first cut for the beam um, with the table saw. That was kind of tricky. But I cut it a little fat, and what I want to do is take my knife and trim it down to where I want it, rather than cut too much off. That way I can just shave it in 
you know, any way I wanted or use my chisel or whatever. Um, just do the last of it just to get it where I want it. So, what I do is take a little bit at a time. Take a little bit at a time. Trim this down to anywhere I want. Now, I gotta remind you, I am not a woodworker, I'm a mechanic. So, there are guys out there that could uh, blow this out in no time. I respect them for that. Sorry, I lost you. The GoPro died. I wanna bring you up to a little speed here. Um, that's my first, um, what the hell ever it is, where this goes down in. You can see, um, getting there, um, I decided I'm going to shave down the male end of that thing just to, because I don't want to weaken, take any more wood out of here and I'm afraid I'll weaken this, which I don't want to do, so I... We'll trim a little bit more off here, and I'm I'm doing everything with this little quarter-inch chisel that I bought, and uh, you can see that's the what I've pulled out. But in any case, it's coming. Well, sorry, but the uh, whole GoPro ran out of battery as usual, so I was unable to uh, get some of it, but. Pretty much cut this down to where I want it on both sides. Um, it's just a little bit too tight. Of course, with wood, you know, it swells and. Hold on a second. Ha! Ah, voila. Well, as you can see, I got one hell of a mess to clean up, but essentially. This goes in here, and put your clevis pin. Like that. And what this does is, say, so carry it like that. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure. Just let, let the saw do the work. Take your time. Right there. Yeah, you know. That's about a four inch piece of wood ish. Sure, it's not a spring pole. You don't want it to snap, 
smack it. Well, you can see, not a huge piece of wood, but beautiful firewood, you know, a lot easier than the old Laplander. Well, it passed the field test. Uh, pretty happy with it. Just show you how it breaks down. Again, probably familiar with this type of saw, but let's hold this. Now be careful because this is spring-loaded, not spring-loaded, but it's got some tension on it. This is my little handle that I carved and carve. I cut another piece of that maple. You can see it's beveled. So it'll catch right there when it's loaded. So you take all the tension off it. Pull out. Pull out your beam. And as I mentioned, uh, I've got these, uh, the blade is clevis pinned there but I use cotter pins instead because I was afraid the clevis pins would fall out. But essentially you put it away you go like that you go like that and you take your um, tension cord whatever you want to call this thing you bring up some slack like that wrap it around you can kind of do one of these if you wish. Hold it. Just kind of jam it in there like that. But essentially what you got is a portable saw. Now my next project is to um, make a case for it. And ultimately it'll be down the side of my pack. But that's it. Yeah, I did make it 24 inches. Um, probably could have got by with a 20, um, 21 inch, which seems to be what the commercial ones are. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm happy with it. I'm going to put it back together and just stretch this thing out. Put your beam in. Oh, yeah, these are the little mortise and tenon. Once it gets in there, pop this one like that. Once it's together, I'm sure you've seen these a million times, but make sure you're winding it the right way. Just the more, the tighter you wind it. Now it's time to get tension to hold the blade tight. Now, the trick is you want to make sure that blade is good and tight, but you don't want to over tighten it. Because what will happen is you'll break the blade. But once you get it tight enough, that's not really tight enough. But like that. 
that. This locks in like that. And then you can cut away. Voila. It took me a couple hours to build it. Nah, I'm lying. Three hours. But I mean, whatever. On a Saturday afternoon, it's nine degrees outside. It's too cold to go ice fishing. The wind's blowing like a crazy. Uh, so, you know, for 20 bucks worth of materials, in three hours I got myself a saw. The alternative is to go on eBay or someplace and get one for 75 bucks plus shipping. But it's fun, you know, the reason you get into bushcraft and self-reliance in the first place is because you want to do things yourself and when you can make your own tools. Uh, like this pouch that I made the other night. This here. I might do, I don't know, I didn't do a video on it. I ended up getting called out to work and I came home and forgot to turn the camera on and finish the project. But a little possible pouch. You can see it's got a flat bottom. Uh, again, my first one. But now I got a saw and a pouch that I made myself with a little bit of, little bit of effort. And it's a little more rewarding when you do it yourself. Um, anyway, good luck.